Good morning, boys and girls. It's Auntie Swan. I'm so excited to be teaching Sunday School with you this morning. I have so many games. I hope you're looking forward to today's lesson too. Before we begin, we have to ask the Holy Spirit and God to join our Sunday School. Otherwise, it would be meaningless, right? Here we go. Three, two, one, pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we pray that your Holy Spirit can join us this morning in our Sunday School. We're learning about the fruit of the Spirit and we're learning about faithfulness and how faithful you are. So Father, we pray that you will be with us and talk to us and teach us about the lessons of David and Jonathan and their friendship to each other. We thank you for everything and we pray in your son's most precious name, Jesus. Amen. Do you know who my friends are back here? I'm covering a title you may or may not know, uh, but if you do, tell your mommies and daddies. Boys and girls, can you look around the house where you are right now in your room? Do you see anything that's growing? Do you have any plants? Or maybe you can look out the window. Do you see any trees or flowers? Well, if you don't right now, that's okay. You can imagine it, okay? When we have strong roots in God, then we can grow fruits of the Spirit. Like I promised, we're going to have many games today. The first game we have is to count your fruits, and it starts now. So every time you see the faithfulness fruit, you're going to tally it up and count one as you've seen it. And at the end of the lesson, we'll see how many fruits you found worship time so boys and girls let's get off your chairs i want to see you doing actions i want to see you singing and dancing because god loves your worship every time you sing it makes his heart glad the fruit of the spirit's not a coconut the fruit of the spirit's not a coconut if you want to be a coconut you might as well hear it, you can't be the fruit of the Spirit Because the fruit is love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon oh. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon oh. If you wanna be a watermelon, oh, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. It's the fruit is love, joy, peace, peace, kind, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, peace, kind, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the spirit's not a cherry. If you wanna be a cherry, you guys well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. It's the fruit of love, joy, peace, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fruit of the spirit's not a Banana man. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana man. If you wanna be a banana man, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, peace, kind of goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Love, joy, peace, peace, kind of goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. not a manga. The fruit of the spirit's not a manga. If you want to be a manga, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit. Because the fruit is love, joy, peace, nature, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, Steadfast love of
So today we're talking about King Saul, Prince Jonathan, and shepherd boy David. King Saul's son is Prince Jonathan, and he really should be the next king. Next king, Except God has a different king in mind, and he chose the son of Jesse, and his name is David. Remember David and Goliath? Boys and girls, do you have a secret handshake with a friend or brother or sister or your mommy and daddies? I want to show you a video of how a teacher has secret handshakes with his students. Wasn't that cool, boys and girls? If you don't have a secret handshake yet, that's okay. You can ask your mommy and daddy or your brother or sister or friend to make one up. So this is the story of David and Jonathan and their friendship. They were so close, they were like brothers. They were connected like two halves on a piece of paper that's connected together. And this is a very unlikely friendship. See, Jonathan was the king's son, and he was meant to be next in line for the throne. But God promised David that he'll be next in line, and this made Saul, King Saul, very angry. In fact, King Saul hated David because David was just a shepherd boy. He didn't wasn't anyone special. So boys and girls, let's read this passage together if you can. On a count of three, one, two, three. Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Wow, King Saul kept David at his home. It's like a never-ending sleepover. That's what they were having. This picture is a scene from the movie Kite Runner, and it kind of shows how two boys and their friendship and how close they are. So I just want to share with you how Jonathan and David might have been like when they were kids as well. So because King Saul was so angry at David, because he's going to be the next in line on the throne, he, in fact, was going to plan some evil plots against David. And David went to find Jonathan and asked him, why is your dad trying to kill me? But Jonathan didn't believe that Saul really wanted to kill David. So they came up with a plan to find out how Saul really felt. Here's the next passage. Let's read it together. One, two, three. So David said, look, tomorrow is a new moon feast and I am supposed to dine with the king, but let me go and hide in a field until the evening of the day after tomorrow. If your father misses me at all, tell him. David earnestly asked my permission to hurry to Bethlehem, his hometown, because an annual sacrifice is being made there for his whole clan. If he says, very well, then your servant is safe. But if he loses his temper and becomes angry, rawr, you can be sure that he is determined to harm me. This was David speaking. Next, David and Jonathan had to come up with a secret way to communicate what Jonathan found out. If Saul really did want to kill David, Jonathan could get in trouble for telling him. Well, here's the plan that they came up with. Let's read it together. One, two, three. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid when this trouble began and wait by the stone easel. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it as though I were shooting at a target. Then I will send a boy and say, go find the arrows. If I say to him, look, the arrows are on the side of you, bring them here, then come, because as surely as the Lord lives, you are safe. There is no danger. But if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you, then you must go, because the Lord has sent you away. And about the matter you and I discussed, remember, the Lord is witness between you and me forever. 
David and Jonathan had their own secret code, just like how you might have a secret handshake with your mom, dad, brother, sister, or friend. The next day, it was time for the new moon festival to start. So David hid in the field and Jonathan went to the festival. On the second day of the festival, King Saul noticed that David was missing. So Jonathan was faithful to his and David's plan. Faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit. Let's read the verse together. One, two, three. But the next day, the second day of the month, David's place was empty again. Then Saul said to his son, Jonathan, why hasn't the son of Jesse come to the meal, either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered, David earnestly asked me for permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, let me go because our family is observing a sacrifice in the town and my brother has ordered me to be there. If I have found favor in your eyes, let me get away to see my brother. That is why he has not come to the king's table. Let's read what happened on the passage. Ready? One, two, three. In the morning, Jonathan went out to the field for his meeting with David. He had a small boy with him and he said to the boy, run and find the arrows I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. Let's keep reading. One, two, three. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called out after him. Isn't the arrow beyond you? Then he shouted, hurry, go quickly, don't stop. The boy picked up the arrow and returned to his master. The boy knew nothing about all this. Only Jonathan and David knew. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said, go, carry them back to town. After Jonathan's servant left, David came out of hiding to say goodbye to Jonathan. This was a really sad moment. They weren't just saying goodbye for a little while. They knew that they'll never see each other again. The hearts remain faithful to each other. Faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit. And we can see how God helped David and Jonathan to be faithful friends. Boys and girls, do you remember several months ago, Auntie Swan taught you what our parents, our mommies and daddies do in adult worship. So after we read the Bible, and the teacher or the pastor or whoever is reading the Bible would say, this is the word of the Lord. And everyone would respond, thanks be to God. So let's try that, okay? I'm gonna say, this is the word of the Lord. And you respond together, thanks be to God. Excellent. Boys and girls, so that was the story of David and Jonathan and their friendship. Now I'm going to show you a video of how it sort of have happened, reenacted by some of my friends. So parents, I want to give you a disclaimer. If you don't like rodents, I would advise you to step away from your screen now. So here's a second game. While you're watching the video, I want you to count how many rodents there are. There could be guinea pigs, it could be mice. And if you see anything else, tell mommy and daddy, okay? This Bible story comes from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 20. Jonathan and David were great friends. We're such good friends, Jonathan, I can't believe it. I know, we're like the best friends ever. Jonathan's dad was the King Saul, kind of a grumpy dude. <laughs> I'm King Saul. Yep, a grumpy dude. Sir, may I have some grains? My family is starving. Uh, what? No, no rodents. Get out of here. I need all the grains. <laughs> <laughs> 
It didn't bother Jonathan that one day David would replace his father as king. I just know you're going to be king one day. <laughs> you're going to be the best king ever. Aw, oh, shucks. You really think? I, I know it. And you know what else? Tag, you're it. <laughs> oh! This looks good. <laughs> You'll never find me in here. Ah! There you are. <laughs> found you. <laughs> wow, David, you found me so quick. <laughs> well, what can I say? You always hide in the same place. <laughs> so true. You know me so well. Yeah, we're besties. Best friends. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> they just had one problem. King Saul hated David. I hate David so much. He's a man after God's own heart. I'm gonna kill that rodent. Yeah. <laughs> I do not can't damn it so much, man. Bullseye! Great shot! <laughs> Thanks, I've been practicing. Hey, Jonathan, I was thinking, it seems like your dad doesn't like me. <laughs> what? No way. I mean, he's over there, staring at us right now. Oh, oh, nothing to see here, nothing at all. Just the king walking through the forest. I'm definitely not looking to kill anyone. I got a bad feeling in my tail. Well, here, I'll tell you what. At tomorrow's feast, my dad's expecting you. So don't show up, and I'll talk to him to make sure everything's okay. Okay, sounds fluffy, but how will I know what you find out? Well, you go wait behind that, uh, that big rock outside. The one outside the castle, and I'll shoot arrows towards you. Huh? If I shoot the arrows beside you, it means everything is good. If I shoot them past you, it means he does want to kill you. Don't worry. Everything will be fluffy. <laughs> I'm a great shot. Look. Uh, Jonathan, you missed. Uh, <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Hey, this is a great meal, Pop. Thanks. I do not damn it so much. Uh, so, what did you do today? It was a great day. I spent hours yelling at the prisoners in the dungeon. Run! Run! Run, so, Slowpoke! Can I take a break? Hmm, let me think. No! But, but I've been running for hours! Run! Say, where's that friend of yours, David? Oh, uh, he had some stuff to do, so... He won't be around for a few days. I know what you're up to. You want him to be king instead of me. Go get him so I can kill him now. He really does want to kill David. I need to let him know. Oh, please, God. Protect me and let those arrows fall beside me and not pass me. I hear the arrow. Oh no, it went past me, and that means Saul wants to kill me. Through the years, Jonathan protected David, and they stayed best friends. Sometime later, King Saul was killed in battle, and David became king. He was a great king and was loved by his people. Seeds, grains, and all the broccoli you can eat for everyone! <laughs> Boys and girls, did you like that video? Who thought it was cute? Hands up. Who thought it was a little bit scary? Hands up. Oh, I see a few parents raising their hands. Boys and girls, let's talk about friendship. Do you have a BFF, like a best friend forever or a bestie? Did you know that Jesus is your ultimate best friend? He's with you wherever you are. You only need to call out to him whenever you're feeling lonely or sad. You just have to say, Jesus, I really wish that you were beside me right now. And I know you're in my heart and I want to talk to you. That's all you have to do. You can also pray for a friend. I know it's sad when you don't have a friend or a BFF or a bestie of your own. And if it's something that you want, you are allowed to ask for it and pray for that. 
there is a book in the Bible called Lamentations. And Lamentations means sadness. And so God is very familiar with sad feelings as, as well. One, two, three. Lamentations 3, 21 to 25. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. So if you seek God and you ask God for the things that you want in your heart, God will hear your prayers and just might send a friend to your side. And while you're waiting for a good friend, you need to become the friend that you want to have. Because God gave us how many ears? One, two. And how many mouths? Just one. So God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. And in James 1, 19, he says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. Remember a few weeks ago, we talked about flipping your lid when you have agitated feelings and your mean thing comes out? Yeah, that is when you're angry. So when you feel yourself flipping your lid, take those deep breaths, pray, and make sure that your lid comes back down so then you use your brain to talk about what you're angry about, what you're sad about, but you should think about what you're saying before you say it. Well, before you speak, you want to consider these points. T, is it true? Is this a fact or is it opinion or a feeling? Um, H, is it helpful? Does it help you? Does it help the situation? Does it help the other person? I, is it inspiring? Also, does it improve on the situation? Does it make people better? Does it make the situation better? N, is it necessary? Would this be better left unsaid? K, is it kind? What is your motivation for communicating? So boys and girls, those are the five things you need to think about before you speak. To dig a little deeper as to how to become the friend you want to have, here are some other questions. Other helpful questions to consider include, am I seeing this from a place of anger? Am I being respectful? Who is my audience? Who else might be able to hear, see, or read this? How might what I am saying appear to others? Could someone misinterpret what I'm saying? What am I saying about myself with these words? So boys and girls, whoever you speak to, your mommy, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your friend, your teachers, your classmates, you want to consider the five points of think and maybe even dig a little deeper as to why you want to say those things before you say it. Because Words are like a bag of feathers. Once you let go a bag of feathers on a high mountaintop where the wind is blowing, you cannot come back and grab those feathers. It's out there. It's gone. So let's take some time to think before we speak. Boys and girls, as I promised, we have more games. So we talked about that we have two ears and one mouth. So God wants us to listen more. And so these games are to teach you how to listen better so that you can become a better friend. Our first game is called Labels. And I want you to practice this with your brother or sister, your mommy and daddies at home, and then you can try it on a friend. So if someone comes to you and says, I really don't like school, then you can respond by saying, it sounds like, it seems like, 
it looks like or it feels like, and you can fill in the blank. So if someone says, I don't really want to go to school, you could say, it sounds like, and you could just be a copycat. It sounds like you don't want to go to school. I know it sounds really simple, right? It's just copying the, what the other person says, but that's the game. You're kind of playing copycat. It sounds like you don't really want to go to school. It seems like you don't really want to go to school. It looks like you don't really want to go to school. Or you can even say, it feels like you're a little sad. And then you want to hear what the other person continues to say. So the other friend comes and says, yeah, I, I just don't want to see the people at school. And then you can say, well, it sounds like you don't want to see the people at school. It seems like you're afraid of your friends at school, or it looks like you don't really want to go to school, or it feels like you're trying to avoid something. So you can fill in the blank. It's um, a little bit awkward at first because you're trying to use these phrases, but once you practice them, I think you'll find it easier. You can also use the phrase, you sound like, you seem like, you look like. So when, by you saving the word you, um, it's more engaging and you're connecting with them a little bit more. Try it out. So if your friend is saying, I don't really wanna go to school, you can respond by saying, it sounds like you don't like school and you wait for them to respond. Or you could say, it seems like you don't really want to go to school. Here's game number two. And this game is called Mirrors. Again, it's very similar to Copycat and this one is even easier. So all you have to do is to copy and repeat the last three words, either in a statement or in a question form. So if your friend says, I don't really want to go to school, right? I don't really want to go to school. Those are the three go to school, the last words. So when you repeat, you can say, go to school and make it a question, or you can say, go to school and just wait because the other person might respond and you're waiting for them to respond. And when you use the last three words of any sentence, that can be used in place of phrases like, what do you mean by that? Is there anything else? Please go on, which were great phrases as well. You can try those, use those phrases as well to help your friend get their thoughts out. But this game, we're using the last three words as a copycat word. Let's try another one. If someone says, I don't feel like eating, then you can ask, feel like eating? All right, boys and girls, this is the third game with the family and it's called pass a thing. You can get anything to pass. You can use a ball, you can use a talking stick, you can use a toy, Pokemon, Barbie, stuffies, invisible Bob. Like if you wanted to take invisible Bob and pass him back and forth or invisible Carla, you can pass Carla back and forth. That would work too. But I'm going to use Hello Kitty. So my friends here is Wooten and Penny. So Wooten and Penny, you see them beside me, right? The last sentence of your whatever, however you're speaking, has to be a question. And then after the question, then you can pass the object back and forth. If one person is taking too long, you can ask them, ask them to finish off in one minute. That is the game. So let's try this. For example, if Wu Tin is gonna say, who did you play with at recess? And then Penny might say, I played tag with Pikachu. And then she has to ask a question. Do you like to play tag? And then she can pass it on. Then, then you can pass it on and say, and then Wu Tin can say, yes, I like playing tag. What other games do you play? That was a question. You can pass it now. Pass it back to Penny. Uh, we also like to play skipping rope. I skipped to 100 one time. Do you know how to skip rope, Wooten? And she passed back. And Wooten says, I do, but I don't like it. 
because I always get tangled. Do you think you can help me with my skipping? You can pass it on. And you can keep on going back and forth, or but maybe at that point, you want to go try out skipping. That's an okay option too. What made David and Jonathan's friendship so strong? The Bible tells us about the unbreakable bond between David and Jonathan. We can apply these lessons to our own friendships today. Friends usually share common interests, and for David and Jonathan, that was serving the Lord. When friends make God the number one priority in their lives, they can accomplish more by working together than on their own. Try reading a Bible story with a friend. The quiet thoughtfulness that comes with studying alone is nice, but with a friend, we might learn and remember twice as much. Ecclesiastes says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. Good friends are ready and willing to help, even in difficult circumstances. David needed Jonathan's help to determine if King Saul, Jonathan's father, intended to kill him or if he was safe. Jonathan didn't hesitate to help David carry out any plan he chose to get the information they needed. First Samuel says, Then Jonathan said to David, Whatever you say, I will do for you. David and Jonathan were loyal to each other. Saul, jealous of David, did want to kill him. Jonathan challenged his father's angry feelings, even boldly asking why David deserved to die. It takes courage to stand up for our friends if they are being hurt or bullied. We should ask parents, family members, or teachers for help if we see this kind of behavior. True friends support each other, even if it means one person taking second place. As the king's son, Jonathan would normally have been the next king, but God had chosen David for that position. Instead of being jealous or angry, Jonathan accepted God's will with grace and love, supporting his friend. First Samuel says, Then Jonathan made a covenant, or a promise, with David, because he loved him as himself. Similarly, in the book of Mark, Jesus says, Love your neighbor as yourself. Our neighbor means everyone around us, so we should be sincerely happy, not jealous, when good things happen to other people. So what made David and Jonathan's friendship so strong? They were loyal and supportive, helped each other, and weren't jealous if one had a higher position or greater ability. Godly friendships are especially strong because when we make God the number one priority in our lives, we work together for a wonderful purpose. Boys and girls, thank you for being such fantastic listeners. So let's answer some of your questions. Who was on the wall with me? Those were all characters from Adventures and Odyssey. If you haven't listened to radio dramas from Adventures and Odyssey, I would encourage you to. They were so fun, and Auntie Swan used to listen to some of them when I was young, and now Emily and Devin really enjoy listening to them too. Of rodents, how many did you count? Well, there were at least nine. Last of all, how many fruits of the spirit did you count? Well, we counted at least 22. 